Welcome to the Treasure of Glory podcast. My name is James Perkins, and I want to thank you for taking the time to check this out. You can go to my website at treasureofglory.com, and there you will find blog articles, some e-courses, and things like that to help you grow in your knowledge of God. In our last episode, we talked about transformation, how the Christian transforms into the image of Christ. Now, that doesn't mean look like Jesus. It means be like Jesus, carry his anointing, carry his blessing, carry his love and his joy and his peace and all the fruit of the Spirit. How to go from a child of wrath, a child deserving God's wrath, to a child of grace, a child that does not deserve grace but receives grace because you have surrendered your life to Christ and you have taken that step through the door of faith into the grace that is offered to us. Okay, so how do we transform? How do we feed on God's Word? Okay, so think about this. What is in your spiritual diet? What are you feeding your spirit man, your inner man that we have talked about at length in other episodes? You know, we feed our physical body. We take care of our body. Some of us go to the gym because we want to look good. We sleep. We feed it. We take showers to keep it clean. But sometimes we neglect the more important part of ourselves, which is the inner man. Not that you should neglect your body. You should take care of your body because you want to be healthy enough to spread the gospel. But your inner man, if you neglect to feed your inner man, your inner man will not grow in knowledge of God. It will not grow into the image of Christ. Let me read to you a verse of Scripture from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 in the Passion Translation. Here's what it says. So above all, Guard the affections of your heart, for they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. Did you notice how it said, pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being? See, that's the inner man. That's your spirit. Don't neglect your spirit. Pay attention to that innermost being, because out of your spirit flows the issues of life. Everything comes from the inside out in the Christian life, not the outside in, because God lives in your spirit. And out of your spirit flows all of the fruit of the spirit and the life of God and the anointing of God. But if you neglect your inner being, you won't flow with that anointing. The presence of God will not be strong in you. That fire of the Holy Spirit will be just like a little pilot light. No, ignite that fire with the Word of God and let the presence of God grow in you and receive more and more of that glory as you're transformed into His image. And then it will spill out of your life into other people's lives. Now let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. So here we have a verse from the New Testament that talks about the hidden person of the heart or the inner man. So here Peter is saying, let your real beauty come from the inside out. Not that you shouldn't wear makeup or take a bath and try to look good. That's not what he's saying. But he's saying, don't neglect that hidden person of the heart. Don't forget to feed him. Because if you don't feed him, he won't grow. And then here's a passage from 2 Corinthians 4.16. Paul wrote, Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. So yes, the Bible does make a distinction between the outer self and the inner self, the outer man and the inner man, the hidden person of the heart and the flesh. So if we neglect the health of our spirit man, it leads to spiritual malnutrition. And when you have spiritual malnutrition, this can lead to a lot of problems. You stop listening to the voice of God. You start to have fear and anxiety in your life rather than the peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit. You start to slip into your old sinful patterns and behaviors. You start to walk in the flesh rather than walking in the Spirit. Your inner ear stops being sensitive to the voice of the Spirit of God. But the voice of Satan becomes very clear. So spiritual malnutrition can lead to serious problems in your life. See, your spirit man is going to feed on something. Just like your body, you can either feed it junk food or you can feed it nutritious food. 
And it's the same thing with your spirit. If you just feed it junk by watching certain things on television, by listening to certain types of music, things that do not glorify God, if you feed your spirit man with that, it's just poisoning him. But if you feed your spirit man God's word, you will be supplying your spirit with spiritual power, spiritual nutrients to help him grow. See, the word of God is filled with power. It says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, and it pierces more sharply than a two-edged sword. It can even penetrate to the very core of our being, where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It penetrates and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our heart. And that's from the Passion Translation. So God's Word is filled with energizing power. It gets in there deep into the core of your being, into your spirit, and it can separate soul and spirit. It can separate truth from lies. The Word of God will teach you how to filter out the lies and to take in the truth. See, the Word of God works deep in the core of your being to help you transform more into that glorious image of Christ. It says in 2 Corinthians 3.18, We can all draw close to Him with the veil removed from our faces. And with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. We are being transfigured or transformed into His very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. See, the Spirit of God lives in your spirit. And when you feed on God's Word and you grow, you make more and more room for more glory. And then God can release more of that glory into your being, where it energizes you to go to the next level. It gives you the motivation to say no to sin. It gives you the motivation to live for God and to pray and get in God's Word. See, that's where the Word of God works, deep in the core of your being. It transforms you from the inside out. But without feeding your spirit, man, the truth of God's Word, remember the Holy Spirit doesn't have anything to work with. See, the Word of God is the tool, the instrument, the surgical tool that the Holy Spirit uses to work on you and transform you. So you have to feed on God's Word to give the Holy Spirit something to work with. So maybe you've gone years without getting in God's Word, and your spirit man is sick spiritually. It's suffering from spiritual malnutrition. Well, may I suggest that you get hooked up to a spiritual IV immediately and start taking in the Word of God. And how do you do this? Well, there's multiple ways. You can play God's Word through a speaker. There are audio Bibles. There are apps on your phone that you can download where you can listen to God's Word. You can go walking around and hike on nature trails and wear your earphones and listen to God's Word. You can carry scripture cards and keep your eyes on that and speak it out loud and meditate God's Word. There are so many ways to hook yourself up to a spiritual IV and to take God's Word into your being. But it's going to take effort on your part, and you have to make the decision to do it. But part of that comes from knowing what happens when you don't do it. You get spiritually sick. You suffer from spiritual malnutrition, and that will lead to all kinds of problems, depression, anxiety, fear, sickness, and disease, feeling separated from God, wondering where is God, wandering around in the wilderness, asking what's going on with my life. But see, when you stay plugged in and you feed on God's Word, it quickens your spirit man and makes him more in tune with the Spirit of God. He gets an infusion of spiritual life and energy, which motivates you to live for God. Now, I want you to remember this. Your inner man will eat whatever you feed him, good or bad. So your eye gate and your ear gate you need to protect. Be careful what you're allowing into your eyes and ears, because that's what's going to get into your mind and program you. And remember from our last episode, the spiritual food pyramid. Just like the food pyramid, at the top of the pyramid, you have the foods you want to eat the least amount of, and at the bottom, the most. Think of God's Word and the different ways that you can digest it. You can read it, you can listen to it, you can study it, you can memorize it, and you can meditate. 
Okay, you don't want to just read it. You want to do more than just read. You want to go deep with it. You want to memorize it. And you want to think about it and meditate it and turn it over and over in your mind. And that way, you will chew all of the spiritual nutrients out of it. And you will digest God's word. And your inner man will grow and be empowered by that. So create an atmosphere in your home or in your car, in your life, where God's word is constantly coming in your eyes and your ears. And that's the way it will get into your heart. And that's where it will work for you. That's where it will transform you. And you will become more like Jesus. And when you do that, the world will be drawn to you because they will be drawn to the God in you. And I'm just going to be straight with you. If you do not do this, you will conform to the pattern of the world that we talked about in the last episode. Remember, Paul said in Romans 12 too, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't conform to the world's pattern. Don't talk like the people of the world or act like the people of the world or think like the people of the world. No, you transform the way you think by renewing your mind in God's word. And that requires you feeding on it, taking it in through your eyes and your ears. When you feed your inner man, that will work on your brain, it will work on your mind, and it will transform you, and you will not be like the world. You will be like God. So let me ask you a question. Are you hungry for God's Word? Is your spiritual stomach grumbling and growling to eat God's Word? or? Is it so dead that you don't even know you're hungry? Are you spiritually starving and you don't even know it? So you want to know, how am I going to get in the habit of doing this? Okay, it's real simple. Every time you eat food, you need to eat God's Word. When you eat breakfast, you need to make sure you eat some of God's Word. When you have lunch, same thing. Get in God's Word. Read a chapter or two. When you have dinner, same thing. And that will train you to get in God's Word at different times of the day. The Word of God is a spot remover. It washes your brain. We are washed by the washing of the water of the Word. So whenever you take a bath, take a bath in God's Word. Wash your brain with it. And you will develop the habit of getting in God's Word and digesting God's Word. And it will get into your inner man and nourish it, and it will grow. Maybe you're sitting there thinking, I don't have an appetite for God's Word. I'm not really hungry for God's Word. I'm not motivated. I just, I'm not interested in God's Word. How can I develop an appetite for God's Word? I could give you the cliche answer and say, well, just pray for it. And you're going to sit there and go, well, I don't want to pray. I don't feel like doing anything. I'm just spiritually dry. How do I get going again? Okay, here's the honest answer. You just have to force feed yourself. There is no easy answer. You're going to have to just open the Bible or open the app on your phone, and you're going to have to start reading it, and you're going to have to make yourself do it. It's just like going to the gym or going jogging or starting some other habit. It's not fun. But we're talking about your soul here. We're talking about your spiritual growth. And if you don't do it, you're going to get spiritually sick, spiritually malnourished, and you won't be healthy spiritually. You won't be a good witness in the earth for Christ. So force feed yourself. It tastes so bad at first, but just do it. Just like people who learn how to drink beer. There's no way anybody likes their first drink of beer. Beer tastes nasty. So people just force it down. They just keep drinking it until they make themselves like it. Same thing with the Word of God. If you've lost that appetite for the Word of God, just hold your nose and take a swig and force it down. And if you keep doing that, you will develop a taste for it, and then you'll get to the point where you can't have enough of it. You'll get addicted to it. But there's a process of getting to there. It's not going to happen overnight. So don't read the Bible once and get discouraged when you don't feel like reading it the next day. Okay? Of course you're not going to want to read it the next day. The devil's going to send every demon in hell against you to make sure you don't read it. You're going to get distracted. You're going to get hit with hurdles and obstacles. But you have to learn to break through and determine, I am going to do this. I am going to establish this habit in my life. I don't care what it takes. That's what will get you there. I mean, yeah, you could pray for it and maybe God will zap you and make you do it. But more than likely, it's not going to happen. You have to do it. 
It's on you. Okay? So that's enough for today. I will see you in the next episode. God bless.